Warning, the following video contains explicit language which may be offensive to some viewers or inappropriate for children. The content within this video is intended for mature audiences only. Warning, this video will contain spoilers for the 1986 Frank Miller Batman The Dark Knight Returns. This video may contain discussions and or images of violence, sexual situations, and drug use. Viewing beyond this point is a choice you have made and you take responsibility for that choice. Thank you, and please have a nice day. Hello and welcome to this video. I hope everyone is doing well and <clears throat> having fun and I hope the universe is treating you good. Um, today's video we are going to be talking about the 1986 Frank Miller Batman The Dark Knight Returns and we'll discuss a little bit about the 2012 animated feature based on the comic. Um, <clears throat> the comic was originally released in four parts. The first part being The Dark Knight Returns, part two being The Dark Knight Triumphant, the third one being Hunt the Dark Knight, and the final fourth one is The Dark Knight Falls. Um, <clears throat> a lot of the story is Frank Miller basically talking about his disgust of the Reagan administration of the 1980s. Um, the story came out in 1986 and it takes place in 1986. Um, <clears throat> It's it the even though it was four episodes, it came out in February. The first issue came out in February of '86, and the last issue came out in June of 1986. So <clears throat> the featured characters or the main characters that the story is centered around is of course Batman uh, Jim Gordon Carrie Kelly um, Harvey Dent slash Two-Face um, a new bad guys called the Mutants the Joker and Superman aka Cal L aka Clark Kent <clears throat> This story starts out, okay, before the story starts, about 10 years ago, 10 years before this, which would be 1976, during the um, Ford administration, masked vigilante superheroes were outlawed. Um, <clears throat> Superman basically becomes a tool of the government. He justifies himself to himself as he's still able to go out and do good, but he has to do what the government tells him he has to do. Um, basically, they own him. Um, over the years, there were some changes made to the story and I don't know if Frank uh, Miller himself did it or if DC Comics did it um, <clears throat> that Carrie Kelly the ca a character in there her parents are portrayed as big time dope smoking uh, hippies in the original the original release in the in the original trade 
paperback and the original hardcover. Um, over the years, the the dope smoking and the the stuff like that, the hippiness has been dialed back. Um, the authoritarianism of Ronald Reagan and the Reagan administration has been dialed back. Um, in the the original thing, it's it's. It, I mean, <clears throat> he uh, Miller does not portray Reagan in a, in a very very good light. Um, uh, Miller, from what I understand, things I've read and seen, Miller is a self-described libertarian. So basically, kind of in the middle. And from the stuff that he's done, I can see where he's maintained a true libertarian uh, threshold. He hasn't gone uh, neo-Nazi libertarian like the Libertarian Party has. Um, or to the best of my knowledge, he hasn't gone neo-Nazi like the Li Libertarian Party has. Um, so... He still has that the, the libertarian um, mindset, a true libertarian mindset, I should say. Um, there were some sequels. Uh, you have Batman, The Dark Knight Strikes Again, uh, Batman, The Dark Knight 3, Master Race. Then you have Batman, Dark Knight Returns, The Golden Child. Um, unfortunately, these sequels do not, do not stand up, uh, as well as his original. Um, his all-star Batman and Robin, um, uh, not really that good. Um, yeah, um, yeah, uh, but... We will get into those when I do. Um, I plan on doing videos for Strikes Again, Master Race, and Golden Child. Maybe not Golden Child. I don't know. Um, Golden Child is just, it's weird. Um, and we'll discuss more of that in later on in this video. Um, Basically, what we have is we have Batman who's been in retirement for 10 years. We have Jim Gordon, who's getting ready to retire from Gotham PD as commissioner. Um, Harvey Dent, a.k.a. Two-Face, is recovered and released from Arkham Asylum. The Joker, who's been comatose since 1976, starts to reawaken. Um, his reawakening coincides with the reemergence of Batman. Um, Miller writes a good through thread of how you have to have if you have a Batman, you have to have a Joker. If you have a Joker, you have to have a Batman. You can't... They are the, they are two sides of the same coin type thing. And this is a lot of where... This right here, this story here, is the is where Batman's rogues gallery comes, comes into its own. Um, Alan Moore came afterward... Um, Jim, not Jim Morrison, uh, Morrison, he did the, uh, Grant Morrison, who did the, uh, he, his big thing was Doom Patrol, but he came in and did Batman, and the three of those um, basically kind of codified the Batman rogues gallery as we know them or perceive them today, or as had or as um, people like Jeff Johns and Jeff Loeb have expanded upon um, Batman the Animated Series. 
is all they come out of this this here be because before this comics weren't they didn't have that dark we're in the I mean mind you we're still in the last days of the comic code authority that basically was a giant censorship of what you can can't show you can't have corrupt bad guys you got to show good guys always win all kinds of stuff that the, the comics code authority had um and and this was one of the first comics to push against it to push um help break down those walls uh dc also came up with um john constantine and john constantine basically basically shot all over the um uh, comics Co code authority if um his hellblazer series the hellblazer comics yeah if you want to read some crazy ass shit um not it's not so crazy in in 2024 but in the 80s and keeping in mind of the comics code authority yeah it's it is constantine because of that john constantine is one of my favorite C, uh, dc characters um, our story opens up, <clears throat> like I said, Batman's in retirement, um, Gotham City is even worse of a, uh, dystopian hellhole than it was beforehand, um, and just, th just event after event after event rekindles Bruce Wayne's inner Batman and like I said it brings him back to the forefront um unfortunately as he's coming back into prominence Commissioner Gordon retires leaving the new police commissioner Ellen Yindel to declare Batman a vigilante which he is a criminal and basically for most of, for most of her part in the, her prominence in the story she she has a one woman uh, campaign against uh, the Batman this um kelly carey like i like i talked about her she is inspired by the batman she be she eventually becomes the new robin um one of the things that led to in this continuity in this in the miller batman universe to batman retiring was jason todd's death Plus the the outlawing of max uh, masked vigilantes vigilantes and superheroes and what have you, and <clears throat> she becomes the new Robin and is uh, and Bat Batman slash Bruce Wayne embraces her as a comrade in arms against Alfred Pennywise's you know advice he <clears throat> he still believes that Bruce Wayne slash Batman is un is affected way too much by the death of Jason Todd um yeah it's um the there's a whopper is his name um the one of the psychiatrists um uh, let me see if i can find in my notes um let me see yeah bartholomew whopper he is both Two-Face's psychiatrist and Joker's psychiatrist. 
um, he blames Batman for all the reason why these people are the way they are. Um, he blames everyone but the actual person who committed the crimes. In fact, he um, considers Batman to be a fascist. And to a certain degree, he is. Um, but his failure with Two-Face, because he's popular and the media loves him, his failure with Two-Face is kind of overlooked. And he gets... Um, the Joker a spot on a nighttime... Uh, talk show, um, the Dave Endrickin show, um, which was original, originally based on, had heavily tied to David Letterman. Um, the, the, the way he was, the way he was drawn, the way the banter between him and his, the co-host band leader was very, it was very David Letterman. But when Letterman left New York and left the uh, and switched networks, they couldn't work out the uh, <clears throat> copyright deal or the likeness deals and stuff. So in later volumes of, of, of the comic, his features and stuff, a lot of it was changed. Um, so, yeah, it's that. Um the Joker does what the Joker does. He kills a bunch of folks and escapes. Um, this story is a pre-Harley Quinn story. So Harley Quinn is, you know, Harley Quinn wouldn't exist for about another five, six years. So you have Bruno, which was a on-again, off-again, Nazi love interest, sexual partner of the Jokers, um, kind of a pre-Harley. Um, so, yeah. You have, you have a really good battle between Batman and Two-Face. Then you have the, the fight between Batman and and the mutants, the wonderful, wonderful fight between Batman and the Joker, in which the Joker winds up killing himself and making it look like Batman killed him, and therefore uh, Commissioner Yendel slaps a murder charge on him. Uh, you have the the. Batman versus Superman fight. Um, this is the fight that Zack Snyder fucked up when he made uh, Batman versus Superman: Dawn of Justice. Um, this Snyder should have never based anything on this fight. If you're gonna do this fight, you need to do this story period in the statement. Yes, you can have Superman fight Batman all day long, but don't ape this fight unless you're going to do it justice, which the animated the animated version does real well. The animated the 2012 animated movie is almost a panel by panel, frame by frame you know, translation of, of, of the comic. Um, there are some minor changes that are not worth even dealing with, but, you know, they're there. Um, and if you've read the comic as many times as I has, they kind of stand out. You kind of see them when they happen. But, like I said, they're so minor and so insignificant, they're really not worth dealing with. Um... <clears throat> um, this brings us 
to, and I said earlier that I would talk a little bit about the, the Dark Knight Returns Golden Child. This has the Joker somehow teaming up with uh, Dark Side, trying to rig the presidential election. Um, has Supergirl. It has, or actually, it has Superman in the the Frank Miller universe. Superman never hooks up with Lois Lane. Him and Lois Lane have more of a brother-sister relationship. And he hooks up with Wonder Woman. Has a daughter with Wonder Woman. And then has a son with Wonder Woman. Um, and in Golden Child, it's basically Kelly Carey assuming the role of Batman. Um... Kara Zael and Jonathan Kent, baby Jonathan Kent, Jonathan Kent the second, I guess, um, or junior or whatever. And the the story that's being told in and of itself isn't bad. It's just the the Joker, Dark Side trying to rig an American election, presidential election. It's it's just kind of weird. The art, I can say, is awesome. The art in this one is awesome. I bought a copy of it for the art, not the story. So, yeah, um, there's that. Um, we'll get more into that if I decide to do a video on it. I will do a video on Strike The Inmate Strikes Again, Batman Strikes Again, and Master Race. Because those stories, like I said earlier in the video, fall fall very short from the actual, the original Dark Knight Returns. But they have, especially Batman Strikes Again, uh, the Dark Knight Strikes Again. Um, there are things in that that reveal the trauma that Frank Miller went through watching the events of September 11, 2001 from his studio apartment looking right at the uh, World Trade Centers. And it sh that trauma is throughout this particular comic. The story itself isn't very good. But looking at it and looking at the, the ups and downs of the story and the trauma, you can, you can feel the trauma that Miller was going through at the time he was writing this story. Because of what he saw, um, you, he had started writing the story before 9-11. And you can, you can tell in the story what parts were written before 9-11 and which, story, which parts of the story came after 9-11. And it's a really wild thing to look into. But I'm going to leave that for that video. And until next time, people, remember, be a good human. Be good to other humans. Peace. Hey, it's 10 p.m. Do you know where your children are?